for ceremonies, music for pageantry, and music for concerts, where people come to sort of daydream. And I, I heard the most amazing thing. I used to teach at Boston University, and November and April are the hardest times to be the boss at a university. So the director of the School of Music, who was a friend of mine, he was a piano professor before he became a boss. He put on his door after everybody was complaining, I need my piano tune. There's not enough light in my room. My students don't practice enough. Whatever the complaints were, he put a note on his door and he said, if this was a medical school and you were practicing appendectomies, the whole time you'd be thinking about 2 o'clock in the morning, somebody coming into your emergency room and you're going to save their life because you're going to learn how to do this appendectomy really well. Well, this is a music school. And tonight at 8 o'clock in the concert hall, people who are broken and very distracted and don't feel whole are going to walk into your concert hall. And how they walk out has to do with how well you play music. So that's music at work. Because when people go to concerts and walk out in a better place than when they walked in, that's cool. So playing music for fun is really cool. Uh, playing music with a purpose is awesome. And you all know that from a football band, a basketball band, a hockey band, and every other kind of band. If that, if that soundtrack wasn't there, it wouldn't be the same. So think about that. And, and one of the things about this idea of duets is like, shit, that's chamber music. And that's the other thing about this. For everybody here, if you play music alone, and you and everybody does. You, you, you're sitting there. You got to get your parts memorized and ready, and you got to play for the teacher or maybe the private teacher. Uh, but you got to spend time alone. With regional auditions, all these different things, right? Then you're going to play in large ensembles, and that's where there's a conductor, a teacher, and they and those people are there to help you play well, but also to become a citizen in a band, right? So it's like you're playing in these groups, and you're learning how to be a better section member and a better brass section member and a better member of the band. It just keeps getting better and better as you do these large things. But if you can put that thing in the middle, and I just went to the exhibit today and there's, there's duets everywhere on both companies' tables. If you can just find a friend to play with and start playing chamber music, which is no conductor, and a small group of people playing together, every part of your playing will get better. So if you look at this whole thing as a three-part life, you're better off. So time alone, time in large groups, and time in really small groups, and learn as much as you can about these great things, like better intonation happens, better rhythm happens. You play solos better so somebody can accompany you, and you learn how to accompany, which is really a, an important skill that you really don't learn as well unless you play in a small group. So the other thing about today is think about that. Really think about how you play, and it doesn't matter what level you're on. Do you have small small music to play? And are you spending time doing that? That's a really cool way to get advanced quickly.